I want to share a little bit about this medicinal plant right here. This one is called Muicle. It also has another name called Mexican Honeysuckle or Moyotle. In Mexico and Guatemala, this is very popular. This is, has been used for so many different types of ailments, illnesses or diseases. But one of the main things that this is used for is blood toxicity related illnesses. What is that? Let me explain. So guys, this is the Mwikle tea. This is what you get when you infuse the stem, the leaves, and the flowers, and you get this beautiful color of infused and enriched medicine. Now, this is very popular in Mexico, and very popular in Guatemala, and um, I really wanna share its medicinal properties because you might have it near you, you might have it around you, and if you do, I'd sure want you to take full advantage of that blessings <laughs> because this is blessings I want to show you why right so in the in the holistic approach of wanting to heal the body uh, we want to look at the whole body we want to look at the different parts of the body and how they interconnect how they interact with each other and how if if in one place there is a certain type of uh, damage or there's certain type of issues it's going to reflect maybe in another area right so uh, the reason I want to say this is because I want to touch on the topic of the kidneys. We all know that we eat unhealthy. You know, I make videos to explain this over and over again and to demonstrate that we do eat unhealthy. Our food is very contaminated. So if we look at the pollutants that uh, what is considered pollutants to the blood, we can look at our food supply and see if there's any pollutants and we can definitely find a lot of this. Now, why is it important to, to look at the, the pollution level of the blood? Well, because the blood travels to the entire body, right? It travels to all parts of the body. The blood is very polluted and toxic and thick. The whole body is going to experience pollution, right? And one of the main organs is the kidney that has to filter that pollution. So if you look at the foods and we see that hydrogenated cooking oils like 1, 2, 3, Nutrioli, Patrona, Canola oil, these oils that are very cheap, they're refined. They go through a chemical process of bleaching, a washing, and, and what you get basically is a product that our body cannot really break down. And this is a problem because once this goes into the body and into the bloodstream, it starts to pollute it and the body is now going to be saturated with this toxicity and guess what the kidneys are going to feel the stress in the holistic practice of healing we want to look at these different issues these different important key factors to that create issues now other things like processed sugar, we know processed sugar is in almost everything right now. So it is considered a toxin, it is considered a drug, and it is considered something that pollutes the body. Artificial sweeteners, we have a lot of those. agrochemical poison since we have foreign uh, proteins uh, which are basically that the, the body doesn't really recognize because it is not natural And there's the agrochemical poisons. We sure seem to be consuming a lot of agrochemical poisons. And in fact, we consume a lot of it. So you don't have to go far to see that there is a long list of poisons. And you have glyphosate. 
it's such an odd thing that we spray our foods with poisons before we put it in the market to buy it or to sell it you know it's very odd so we have animal proteins which are pollutants to the blood and toxins and food additives and preservatives we have many different types of contaminants in our food supply so it's very important to look at the kidneys so do we have a lot of people in our culture in our society that has kidney problems yes we do yes we do because blood toxicity diseases blood toxicity illnesses can what they do is they give rise to all of this these are all different types of toxicities from the blood because of the accumulation of toxicities and also the deficiencies meaning the lack of that it doesn't have the correct biomaterials in the body at the time it needs to heal so what you get is a wide range of different symptoms the body goes through when it tries to take out or heal from the toxicity which is from all of these different foods right so when we see weekly what it does I want to give you an example right so this kidneys this right here these are something called nephrons nephrons basically are the small little little tubes that are in the kidneys that get smaller and smaller until it reaches to about one cell thick so basically that's how the body will the kidney filters the blood now when there are pollutants or toxicities or toxins that get stuck here in these nephrons that creates a problem how do we know this well we can do a simple observation right we have this rusty piece of nail right here and we put it right here on top of the skin and let's say we leave it here for a whole day right what we're going to probably experience is a little bit of irritation at the end of the day a little bit of itchiness and we're probably going to see some rash or some type of reaction depending on the person right so we can tell that this would be something a little bit toxic and it would cause some type of harm if we left it there for a whole day but what about a week what about two weeks if the longer this stays here we know that this is and we keep it closed like this we do not open it we're going to definitely see that the area will be affected more and more and more what does this mean well with this being a toxin is killing off the surrounding area there's a lot of dead material here now what it's going to do the dead material is going to attract bacteria the bacteria is going to try to clean it to clear up the mess and to try to get rid of the toxicity by maybe trying to eat it up or break it down but in this case right here many times it gets misdiagnosed and what happens it says they they would say that it is a bacterial infection that the bacteria is causing the problem but if we take this away the toxin and we clear it up we clean this area this will heal on its own more than likely imagine this toxicity meaning it comes from all of here and it gets filtered and stuck right here maybe our blood is thick and polluted already and there's a toxin stuck here what is going to happen is going to affect the surrounding area it's going to cause inflammation irritation it's going to cause cell death what is then going to happen if this nephron starts to die out or decay because of the toxin that is here something is going to want to clean it up and that again is going to be bacteria our bacteria will want to clear up the mess that's how our bodies work so in the natural holistic approach we take that in consideration we take the poison in consideration and we take what the bacteria does that they're scavengers by nature into consideration as well so we don't look at this and say oh it's kidney infection no um, we look at it and say there's probably something stuck in the kidneys because it is a filter there are many times in our culture is that we tend to saturate the kidneys by eating so much of this type of food that it cannot take out the trash 
as fast as it's coming in. So this accumulation obviously would give rise to some disease, some illness, some type of symptom will have to be displayed because the body is always trying to adapt. It is always trying to uh, uh, figure out the next move because we give it all these different obstacles. Illnesses do not come upon us out of the blue. They are developed from small daily sins against nature. When enough sins have accumulated, illnesses will suddenly appear. Hippocrates. It's very simple. In order to fix this problem right here, we have to first take out the toxin, push it out, and clean it out. And the medicine that is going to pass on top of the wound is going to be that which will help the kidney help heal itself because the body is naturally trying to always heal and repair itself. It just needs us to give it the proper materials and the conditions. But before we can even think about healing the body with weak lip or with any other medicinal plants which is good for the kidneys, we have to consider the reality that the poisons or that which is considered a poison or a toxin to the kidney we need to eliminate that from our diet. We need to eliminate that from our daily consumption. And this is how we can then go back on the path of healing. Now we can call it any other diseases we want, but what we're doing is we're constantly pressuring the body contaminating the body, stressing the body more and more and more and the body is then expressing a symptom and we should then consider how long are we going to avoid the poisons and blame the germs? How long are we going to do that for? Because if we continue doing that game it doesn't seem that we're going to finish seeing all of these different sicknesses. So. That is why it's very important, and I share, let food be your medicine and not your poison. Medical doctors are working on the germ theory of disease, but the germ theory is already weakening and is due for being thrown aside. Dr. Fraser of Canada and Dr. Powell of California have experimented with billions of germs of all varieties, but they have been unable to produce a single disease by the introduction of germs into the human subject. Dr. Waite tried for years to prove the germ theory, but he could not do so. During the World War, an experiment was conducted at Gallops Island, Massachusetts, in which millions of influenza germs were injected into over 100 men at the government hospital, and no one got the flu. Germs are scavengers. E.W. Cordingly, M.D. and D.A.M. Principles and Practice of Naturopathy.